my son's son will not even think about a world without Bitcoin. People don't know it's the fastest growing technology ever. Probably still the first inning. EDCs will be the ultimate advertisement for Bitcoin. I think it'll be a point where people wake up and realize I don't want the government knowing every single transaction. I don't want the government able to cut my whole account off with a flick of the switch. You can take it wherever you want if your nation starts treating you badly and you have to escape that nation. You can take your Bitcoin with you with no problem at all. Nothing stops an idea whose time has come. What do you think, if we are successful, what will be the role of Bitcoin in the future? What, what position will Bitcoin take in, uh, in our uh, whole financial system? Uh, great question. The first part of how do I see it in the future It, it's what most people like me, Bitcoin maxis, uh, believe, but um, also just anyone that understands technology and the movement of technology, it marches. It's a steady march, right? So I'm old enough to remember when there were no cell phones and uh, when they did become uh, started to become prevalent, uh, it was cool to have. It was new. There was, you know people doubting whether people would actually use this thing or not. Imagine that, like people doubting cell phones. Um, and that was a very big change, especially when uh, iPhones came about and smartphones came about and the smartphones kind of made us dumb, right? So, uh, but now you can't imagine a world without it. My son, when I gave him his first iPad, he was six. I didn't think I should have done that. I think it was too early now in hindsight, but I was thinking I'm going to give him a, a heads up on technology, how to use computers and all this stuff like that. Not thinking about the social uh, media ramifications and all that, but he very much lives in a world where he can't fathom it without a smartphone and a uh, cell phone, you know, so um, I think it would be very much the same in about 20 years. My son's son, perhaps, <clears throat> will not even think about a world without Bitcoin. It would be unfathomable. It would be something like, uh, you know, remember when we used to use paper for money? It's very primitive and some dirty money. Why'd you carry all that around in your pocket? It's so inconvenient. It, it makes less and less sense. So it's just the internet. It's just money catching up with the internet. We finally have money for the internet, right? So um, and part of that is um, where do I see it as far as the effects it will have or where it would be in its evolution, maybe, maybe another generation out my son's son um i am i am in a long i am also in the camp that this is the path to bitcoin hyper bitcoinization and i also believe that it's unstoppable and i also believe that it doesn't matter what uh politician you like or not because uh there's rules to money. If you study Austrian economics, good money always finds a way. People want the good money. Uh, just like in Soviet Russia, uh, the people themselves were banned from owning US dollars, but the oligarchs and diplomats and the higher up elites all had access to it and they used it because it was a better money. And I think that The, the idea of uh, Bitcoin being co-opted by the government or the ETFs, um, I think it's very narrow sided. It, they're not looking at the whole picture because, look, why, why, is, why did Bitcoin make it this far without the support of the government or your favorite politician? Why did it get here this far to be an ETF on the stock market? in the United States as a presidential election topic. It didn't have help from the government. 
<laughs> you know, it was grassroots from the people. It stood on the shoulders of all of the tenants that made it great. You know, the decentralization, the hard limit of 21 million. We can go on and on, but it got here because of what it is. And when you truly understand what it is, you truly understand Bitcoin is unstoppable. So that's, I, that's what I think it's, it'll be everything that we need and more, but not because uh, of some politicians. If that makes yeah, it's, sense. it's so interesting because it like, even like, the governments did not help them. Governments even fought them. Like governments, right. governments even wanted right. to crack them down. I think Chinese probably were the first ones to actually really mm. fight them in 2013. Uh, and they were, st they're still not successful, which is amazing because if the Chinese cannot do it, there's no government that can do it. Um, because yeah, like the, <laughs> there's no, no, no government as successful in, in cracking down on things as, as the Chinese. Also, there's an interesting thing. Like when you're, when you invest in everything that the Chinese government has banned, you're doing really good. Like you invested in Facebook, <laughs> you invested in, in Apple, Apple, all those great mm -hmm. co companies. And, and then all of a sudden you're doing really good. I like the comparison with the, the cell phone. Uh, and you said like you lived through it. So you saw mm -hmm. how we went from landline to cell phone. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's a really good comparison to get a, get a understanding how quick and how uh, good the adoption of Bitcoin can go when we go from um, fiat broken money to sound money with Bitcoin. Um, can, do you ha can you walk us through how you saw the, the phone adoption where you had landline? Did you have a landline phone in, in, in your house uh, oh, yeah. or even your, in your car? And then <laughs> how long did it take you to like, like f first seeing uh, a phone and then adopting it? How, how quick was that? Great question. Okay. This is like right in my wheelhouse. I don't have to think about it. I just know about it. I lived it. Right. So, um, growing up in the eighties, uh, you know, I'm dating myself, but growing up in the eighties was a great time. And there was a movie called, uh, I believe it was wall street with Michael Douglas. And it's a famous movie. It's about, um, you know, wall street brokers, they're cutthroat, they're sharks, yada, yada. Greed is good, I believe, comes from that, that, uh, that movie. And at the end, the main character, he is on a brick cell phone. And I mean, everybody in the hood and everybody, local, regular people blown away. Like, is this guy making a call on a beach? Like, that's cool. Like, you know, but you'd had to be you would have had to have been that guy or that type of guy to own that phone because it was so expensive just to purchase and the service was ridiculous, right? So it was it was not practical and it, it lasts for one hour tops and something like that. And it was heavy, big. It wasn't practical, but it was a flex, right? So it took years after that, I mean, a good five to six years before I saw people using their own cell phones, that it was becoming more common. But even then it was people who had money. It was people like doctors, lawyers, and you know, where I'm from, the drug dealers, they had cell phones. It was cool, right? But we couldn't afford, regular people couldn't afford it. And technology makes things cheaper. So, we benefit from that, the silicone being cheaper and faster, the products being cheaper and faster, uh, outsourcing uh, manufacturing to places like China, Japan, outside of America made things cheaper and competition made things cheaper. So as things evolved, it became something that we were kind of allowed to have because it was cheaper and it was uh, capitalism, right? They wanted to sell more cheaper. You're gonna sell more if it's cheaper faster, better, and it still goes on to this day with, um, you know, the, the law of technology doubling and chips and all that, like that. I forget the name of the law. Do you remember that law? I also, I thought about it, but, um, it's, it's, it's interesting because it, it's also comes back to the deflationary nature of technology. When you find like, right. or oh, the phone on the beach, 
It was mm -hmm. such an expensive thing. Not everyone yes. has a phone. It, it, it reminds right. me of the deflationary thing and uh, rising prices just because of inflationary policy. Jeff Booth says, right? Technology is deflationary. Free markets are deflationary or they, they go to the medium means of production close to that. Uh, it should. And if it doesn't, and if things aren't getting cheaper, in this technology driven world where we can do things 10 times better, 10 times faster, then why is that? Then it's a control system, right? So comparing the growth and the, uh, expansion of Bitcoin to the cell phones, Bitcoin is growing faster than it's being adopted faster than uh, the expansion of cell phones. So people don't know that. People don't know it's the, it's the fastest growing technology ever right and uh when you think of it that way i remember the arc of having inter not having internet and then having internet in my house not having cell phones and then having cell phones it was slow 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 and then all of a sudden everyone had a cell phone right and you, you don't you you won't remember this but there were some things called beepers but the doctors get a beep or, or a page, boop, 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 boop. And then they have to report to the ER or, or surgery or an, or an emergency. Um, drug dealers had this as well. They'd get a beep. We used to send each other codes back and forth. Not that I was dealing, dealing drugs. Don't think that. Only crypto, only dealing Bitcoin. And, um, but it was slow. And then all of a sudden, everyone had it. And then 10 years later, no one can even imagine the world without it, right? And then, and then adoption for internet. I remember uh, no one had it on my block. No one had the internet. And even though it was at colleges and you can go to cafes and AOL, you've got mail, was becoming popular. Uh, people that had a computer in their house, they were doing a little bit better. They were, you know, a little more well off. Oh, you have a computer to get the Internet? Because remember, there were no cell phones. So 95, around 95, people started having computers more in their homes with Dell and Gateway. And then by 2000, if you didn't have the Internet, um, it was weird. You see, so I think that, we're going to we're, we're going to cross a Rubicon where it's kind of weird if you don't have Bitcoin. And, and it's going to be like financially irresponsible. It, uh, by the way, I just looked up. It's Moore's or Moore's law. Moore's, uh, Moore's law. Moore's law. Yeah. Moore's uh, law. So that, 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 that's that's really cool just for, mm -hmm. for the viewers. And um, I thought just thought about something and never thought about that. When we look at technology adoption, like the internet uh, mm -hmm. uh, and computers, as you said, like it was first a rich guy's thing and yeah. then slowly, slowly came down uh, to the middle class, to the poor class. And now like, like the, the, the global adoption of phones and internets is really broad and really down uh, there. It's not there yet. I think there's still like 10, 20, maybe 25% of the world's population do, don't have access to it. Uh, with cell phones, but there are more people with cell phones than with bank accounts. So <laughs> cell phones For sure. may, 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 made it further. And now, interestingly enough, when we look at Bitcoin adoption, it's the other way around. Like Nigeria is has the highest Bitcoin adoption rate. El Salvador has a really high adoption rate. Not Thailand. Uh, Euro, Thailand, yeah. It's, it's not mm -hmm. America. It's not... Um, Europe, mm. uh, especially not like Germany, Austria, definitely not. Um, what, what, what does that do to the technology that is not adopted by the rich first, but by the poor first? How, how will that mm -hmm. change the hierarchy of, of, of things and the, 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 the normal, uh, Western dominance, uh, that we usually have now? Ca can that really change the, the complete world order or like, how do you see that? Yeah, I think a lot of uh, Western egos will be hurt as uh, many countries leapfrog us in certain aspects, especially if America doesn't 
uh, wrap their minds around exactly what this is and how to get ahead of it. Um, the innovation and the brain drain of the creative individuals in the West and America, specifically Silicon Valley is lauded and, and regarded as one of the, the hubs for innovation in the world, right? So if we don't wrap our heads around this and, and, and get a handle on this, places like Africa and India, they have more young people at working age, productive age. They're trying to figure out businesses and have better life. Uh, back to the cell phones, you know, when they when we started getting cell phones, there was barely a good land land um, telephone system all through Africa and places like that. You could imagine in more uh, less urban places, more rural places, even in the urban places, the cell phone service, the, the, the landlines were non-existent or or bad. Right. A landline. So. Instead of building out a, a landline network like we had in the United States, AT and T, you know this, this, that, fiber optics for landlines, right to a cell phone. Why do that? We're not, you know, that's going backwards, right? So I can bank the unbanked with their cell phone. Um, why do we need to go back to traditional banks then? Why do we need to uh, have a brick and mortar right, and ATMs and all of this stuff like that? Now, now we might need some ATM for, for Bitcoin conversion to cash, which I'm actually working on with, a, with partners of mine. Uh, it's operating on the Lightning Network. But eventually, we won't even need to go out of Bitcoin, right? That's the idea. When I just pay in Bitcoin for your service or your goods, and it's just Bitcoin. So I, I believe it's like get with the program or we're going to be leapfrogged uh, by people that are adopting Bitcoin and this new technology. And then they're embracing it because it's it's exciting, man. I remember when the Internet was here and it, it was kind of like more, a, more of a free for all and it was less restrictions because people didn't know what it was yet. And it, it had to be restricted. And the most advanced thing you can see was a dancing Jesus GIF, you know, and things like that. MySpace page was popping and all that. So I, I think um, America has an opportunity here. They've dragged their feet as long as they can. And if they could have stopped it, they would have. They would have killed it in the crib, as, as they say. But they couldn't. Now it's a teenager, Henri, getting stronger by the second. TikTok, next block. It's interesting uh, the 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 memes that you uh, mentioned the first exciting things and also notice like uh, when social media first was popular that there were like cat videos and then like mm -hmm. <laughs> interesting things but it was like not the main use of it uh, so yeah. that was like really interesting for me um, is is that the equivalent of like ordinals now and those meme coins is that like mm -hmm. uh, oh yeah we have a new technology now all those meme coins and ordinals comes out and mm -hmm. this is but just just a new thing and it will vanish over long term and we will return to the money use of of, of bitcoin how do you see see that part of uh, what makes bitcoin great is its openness right it's open for people to experiment and play on it um Ordinals are kind of uh, a, a sticking point for me. It's tricky. I don't know quite know how I feel about ordinals per se yet because it does it does seem to to muck up the transaction um, fees and all that. It, it, it weighs transactions down and it hikes transaction fees up. But we've seen a, a reduction of that recently. It's gone up. I don't know why the transactions have gone up in, in Bitcoin. Do you? I was also actually asking that myself. Um, I didn't find a, a, a nice reason for that, mm -hmm. uh, but I guess uh, there's just a little bit more um, traffic now coming. Um, yeah. I don't know if it's uh, something with with uh, memes related. I did not mm -hmm. find anything. I think we we would see more about that if that would mm -hmm. be the case. And maybe it's just yeah, we, mm -hmm. we're coming into a bull run. Potentially, people might just want to prepare for that. I don't know. <laughs> Right. But I, I did not uh, research uh, really deeply, so I, I actually don't know. Right. A and uh, I don't think uh, ultimately it's that significant because 99% of the time, Bitcoin's price is closer to 
the low and negligible amount that we know and love. And then there's like that 1% time when it's spiking. You know, look at the lifespan of, of Bitcoin and its uh, transactions fees. They're historically low. I remember when it spiked um, back in the day before SegWit and then SegWit arrived. And if you're, you're sending to native SegWit accounts, it's very, the, the transaction fees are very nominal still it, it, compared to ETH. It, it's uh, beautiful. I mean, ETH fees are a joke. And uh, hopefully they, they, they fix that. But did I answer your question? I kind of went off on a tangent there. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, it's well, really, what do uh, I see? Like people, like ordinals. Yeah. And uh, I, um, but that's also building on Bitcoin, right? Which I think people are doing and have done. We all have heard about the Lightning Network making transactions faster, cheaper. Um, there's people that don't like the Lightning Network. Cool. There's people building alternatives to the Lightning Network. Great. I think these second layer things and building on Bitcoin are great for, for the ecosystem and overall uh, the user experience and economy. Um, Bitcoin itself, just on its base layer, ha base layer has processed more transactions than Visa and MasterCard combined this year something like that, billions of dollars already. And we haven't really scaled yet. So, you know, this is just the beginning. I, it's probably still the first inning or second inning of a, of a nine inning baseball game. You know, we have second layers uh, uh, development like Fediment, which allows uh, individuals like myself or or organizations, nonprofit organizations, family offices. You know, you have a family, a group. We want to uh, control this Bitcoin amongst us, have a community that's just us. And then outside of that, to whatever scale you want, a corporation or a global entity network, Fed, Fedment, uh, Fediment, I believe it's called. Um, Lynn Alden talks about it. Jeff Booth talks about it. I think it's a great thing. And I think people will continue to build on Bitcoin. They're talking about building other things into Bitcoin, um, kind of like the NFTs where in the ordinals where transactions are based on Bitcoin because Bitcoin is the truth machine. It will be the record of history, I believe. Interesting. I think um, with the MasterCard, uh, I think the, the transaction volume was higher than mm -hmm. that. I I don't know if the transaction numbers were also higher. Uh, I have to check mm -hmm. that, but the volume definitely is higher on, on, on Bitcoin, but, mm -hmm. but I have to check if also the number of transactions is, uh, is higher for, for you Bitcoin. mean the actual, the nominal, uh, money price, the, the amount of money. Moved. Yeah. yeah the, like the, right. there's like the, how many transactions were processed and then how big was the volume. Uh, right. and the volume is definitely bigger on Bitcoin than, uh, all of them. But I think because Bitcoin transactions are way bigger than MasterCard transactions right, and Visa transactions. Right. So, yeah. so the number of transactions, I think, are still bigger on MasterCard and Visas, which yeah, is also interesting sure. because a lot of people actually point this out like, oh, Bitcoin cannot compete with MasterCard. Like, in the, mm -hmm. of course, like with number of transactions, speed not because MasterCard is just a database. Like, <laughs> yeah. that, that's, that has we don't no want it value to. at all. <laughs> yeah. We don't you, want it to. You, you, we don't want it to, yeah. Uh, but you could uh, uh, compare Mastercard maybe with a layer above Lightning, like with Fediment, or maybe something even above Fediment. Um, maybe you could do it because I see like there's Bitcoin, then there's Lightning, and Lightning then connects the Fediments. Mm -hmm. uh, at least that's what what I see a little bit with with Fediment as kind of a layer free uh, mm -hmm. and then this is way quicker than mastercard you, you can process way more than mastercard and mm, right. it's more secure and reliable and you have the option always to get down to your bitcoin again and save it uh, securely so like that at some point the technology will be developed for bitcoin and scaling then you're like I don't need fiat anymore. Like it will be right. technically so much better, not only uh, from a monetary standpoint, monetary mm -hmm. is already <laughs> so much better, but even from a technical mm -hmm. payment processing standpoint, right. people like, 
why, why can I not send at midnight to my friend $10 uh, right. in like in the second? Why, why is that not possible with fiat? Mm -hmm. Why is there banking hours? Why, why do we need that? Mm -hmm. We don't. That's the dirty secret that everybody knows. It's the worst hidden secret, right? Like, and the beauty of it, just to piggyback on what you were saying is, we have all those tenets uh, th that are great about Bitcoin and we have, it's, a, it's the finality of the transaction. It's final, it's settled. We don't have those layers of MasterCard and the middlemen in between the transaction uh, taking fees for nothing, basically. They're just taking fees and that, that's the, the economy has grown to be this like kleptocratic thing where we, you know, filled with middlemen getting fat off of just taking fees from, from the middle of transactions where we don't need. It's a, it's a, it's a bearer asset. It, it, there's no uh, liability on the other end and the settlement is final. It's final settlement. And, and imagine nation states transacting it with each other in a time right now where we have uh, wars all around the world popping up. We have America looking like it's at the end of empire. We have America trying to fight for its status as the world currency, reserve currency. And usually, if you know history, uh, when the controlling power it, that's in place has the second or upcoming power uh, challenging them, uh, I, think, I believe something like 12 out of 14 times, it resulted in a war, a hot war, right? So now we have China and Russia showing that it's no longer a, a unipolar world. Uh, we're going to have the US trying to defeat that uprisal, right? Upheaval. And we have the, the proliferation of things like, um, we have BRICS challenging the US dollar, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, and there's a line of other nations waiting to join BRICS uh, to get up under this, get up, get from under this U.S. hegemony um, that that is basically when America catches a cold, the world catches a fever, right? Or the flu or COVID <laughs> or, or something bad, Ebola, right? If you remember that, it, it's not fair. And Basically, we don't trust each other uh, and the banks don't trust each other and the nations don't trust each other. It's the logical thing to do when people have wars that can break out over who controls the money. I mean, there's wars being ha that have been started and people have been killed because they said we're not going to be on the petrol dollar anymore. <laughs> and then America shows up and with with freedom and freedom is, is usually looks like a bullet in the head if you watch or listen to my podcast on a regular basis i guess you already bought some bitcoin and now the most important step is to keep the bitcoin keep them secure in a hardware wallet my personal recommendation for hardware wallet is the bitbox it's super secure it's simple to set up it's also a perfect gift for a friend who has still the bitcoin on an exchange and you can get a five percent discount with the code robin at the checkout visit bitbox.swiss slash robin to get your bitbox and if you really want to bulletproof your self-custody setup your security setup and maybe even your citizenship set up you have to talk to the bitcoin way if you go to the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash robin you get a 30 minute free call where you can dive deep with them if your self-custody setup is secure if your citizenship is secure or maybe might be improvable or your digital footprint in general is secure they are the experts in cybersecurity, in Bitcoin self-custody and how to be a secure, sovereign 
individual in general. And last but not least, I have something completely new for you guys. I partnered up with Coin Vigilante. This is the most beautiful Bitcoin timepiece that I ever saw created by anyone. Look at that beauty. I love it so much. Coin Vigilante made a perfect Bitcoin watch. That's the perfect, subtle, elegant way to go out there and show that you are a Bitcoiner. And that watch brand is Bitcoin only. Make sure to check out the link in the description for this amazing Coin Vigilante timepieces. Those watches are amazing. I love them so much. It was really hard for me to pick the one that I want to have because there are a lot of great options. I went with the new transparency edition. They are all limited. So grab yours. Those will not be available for a long time, but there will come new models and new amazing designs along the way. It's so interesting right now when when we look at the fiat system, there are states that are developing a CBDC, for example, uh, mm -hmm. Euro, the digital Euro, they're really steamrolling ahead and they really want the mm -hmm. uh, CBDC. America apparently is taking a step on that. They really want to no CBDC right now. Like Trump is probably going to be elected in November. He's like, no, 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 I, I don't want the CBDC. Uh, even there are some states where it's already banned to have a CBDC. So like th that's interesting that US, the USA is going a bit, little bit uh, back on that one. Then there's like BRICS, Euro, China. Mm -hmm. uh, there's like a lot of uh, forces trying to, to get on the top of the fiat game. And mm -hmm. I think maybe with that game theory of everyone tries to compete with each other, Right. I think at some point they realize they cannot trust each other and they right. choose something right. they don't have to trust, like Bitcoin, That's like trustless. El Salvador did. Yeah. How, how do you how do you see um, nation state game theory? How do you see uh, US dollar, BRICS, Euro, China uh, coming together and and not trusting each other? Uh, where where do you mm -hmm. see or, or do do you or do you even have a guess on where uh, which country actually? tries the first game theory attack on Bitcoin. I mean, El Salvador is fine. El Salvador is great. But compared to USA and China and Eurozone, El Salvador is just so small. So like I'm waiting for the first big country, like maybe even Brazil or Argentina or something like that. It, it, it's like Michael Saylor said, the first country to print their fiat to buy Bitcoin wins. And I think there, will, there may be a G7, but maybe just outside of the G7 country, something on that order. And it's going to scare the bleep out of all the other big countries and powers, including United States, UE, China and Russia. I believe, I believe a lot of these big countries, China, Russia, are stacking Bitcoin already in secret in the shadows. I believe it's going to play out something to the order of um, for the next 10 years or so, we're going to try to stand up technology that emulates what Bitcoin is, but not the freedom aspects of it, like CBDCs, like BRICS. They need to develop their own payment network to work between these countries they're talking about using uh, something called Embridge. And Embridge will use um, networks that will ultimately touch cryptocurrency networks too. I, Bitcoin will always be the first one that they, they try to use. And I believe, it, now, now imagine this, Robin, when you have a transaction that's ultimately using Bitcoin, but there's something in between either taking fees, slowing it down or hampering uh, Bitcoin's success or speed through that transaction. Eventually, you're going to say, why are we even using this stuff? Why don't we just use Bitcoin? It's here. It's free. It's open. It's trustless. We don't trust America. We don't trust Xi Jinping. We don't trust Putin. We don't have to. That's the beauty of it. We don't trust. We verify. And if we want to move a billion dollars, what better way to do it? If we want to pay another country $10 billion, what better way to do it than the strongest, most secure network? Uh, you'll have your final transaction in 10 minutes as opposed to 10 days, 10 months or whatever. It's like 
it's going to be a, a no duh moment or come to Jesus moment where it looks it, it looks quite silly that 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 we we we're um, making this more difficult than it needs to be. So you know, people are going to realize that we tried all this. We tried we tried yeah Bitcoin, but what about this too? It's going to eventually just be let's just use Bitcoin because it's smart. It's smarter. I right, see so CBDCs. One more thing is I believe CBDCs will be the ultimate advertisement for Bitcoin. I think it'll be a point where people wake up and realize I don't want the government knowing uh, every single transaction. I don't want the government able to cut my whole account off with a flick of the switch, make me a non-person, cancel my accounts. I don't want the government to give me air helicopter drop me some money which will be far easier to do UBI and helicopter money like the COVID checks of uh, $1,400 that happened in America. They'll be able to do those things more easily. But hey, Tom, guess what? That $1,400, you can't use it in this store. Guess what? Um, you could only use it in these hours because we don't want people out late. Guess what? You can't buy that brand. You can only buy the government-sponsored recommended brands. You know, guess what? You know, Robin, we see you've been having too many uh, martinis lately or you've been buying too much alcohol. You know, these dollars don't work for alcohol anymore for Robin. You know, th those type of controls. This is what we're talking about. When you spend, how you spend, how much you spend or what you spend. Um, people are going to say eventually, hold up. Bitcoin looks much better than this and I have the option now to opt out of the system, which we've never had before. The option to opt out of our nation state's currency. I think uh, CBDCs will be the biggest advertisement for Bitcoin ever. So bring it on. I love that. Uh, I, I think I had it once on the podcast before, but I think even like the the fact that. Um, Governments will advertise digital wallets mm -hmm. and the fact that they will promote how to use something digital will enhance the Bitcoin adoption in itself because people then all of a sudden like, oh, I, oh, I can use the digital wallet or oh, that's how it works. And then they can like, oh, yeah, Bitcoin is also a digital wallet. Oh, mm -hmm. and then that one digital wallet, I cannot spend all the time. The other, I can spend it whenever I want. Mm -hmm. But wait, but that one digital wallet, uh, I cannot buy my things with, or or, or I I cannot buy it in that supermarket. So I, I I'm a big fan of actually that you're saying that uh, CBDCs will be a major catalyst uh, for Bitcoin adoption because mm -hmm. the government's basically like, hey, <laughs> use that, and the people right. will be like, but that's that's bad. <laughs> like, that's right. really that's bad. <laughs> really, right. really bad. <laughs> <laughs> this is wait a minute. This is bad. So having privacy and uh, the things that make Bitcoin great, it's like you have to touch it many times to understand what exactly it is and why I need this. Like people aren't people. A lot of people really don't care about privacy. Let's just be honest, um, because if they did, the world would look different. Uh, we, we give our privacy away for using the Facebook app or applications. We don't read the fine print, we give our data away and all of that. I'm, I'm guilty. You're guilty. We don't want to read these 3000 page, uh, fine print. <laughs> we just want to accept and use the app. Right. Um, but you know, people don't know like why Monero might be good. You know, I'm a long time. Uh, crypto guy. I've been here since 2017. I remember N Monero and the whole Zcash and privacy movement. I think it's still a place for that. I think it can be built into Bitcoin eventually to the same order of privacy. I don't know, but I think there should be some more privacy aspects built into Bitcoin uh, to kind of um, give more of that peer-to-peer -peer cash feel. It doesn't mess with the original good stuff. I'm okay with it. We don't have to move fast and break stuff. The bottom base layer is good enough to be the base layer of money for the world. And we don't need to mess with that. 
as much. We leave that for the second layer. And um, perhaps we could build privacy into something like Lightning or the, or the likes. But we don't even know what we don't know is what I'm saying. We don't know that we need that privacy. It's like a third or fourth order of understanding what's actually happening here. People don't even know why a limit is good for Bitcoin, a 21 million limit hard cap. People don't know that. People don't, when they say inflation, oh yeah, the prices go up, but they don't know, know why that's really happening. And they obfuscate this on purpose. That's really interesting. I also want to get into the, the altcoin and Bitcoin layer two topic. Mm -hmm. um, I think without, um, with Out layer two on Bitcoin, there would be a big, big, big market for altcoins. Uh, and then when you come home to, to having layer twos that can be built on top of Bitcoin, mm -hmm. uh, you can build basically the whole altcoin market on top of Bitcoin. Uh, and the, the thing is then like, do we need a second coin? Uh, mm -hmm. like an actual base coin. I mean, there's also tokens uh, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Uh, mm -hmm. And and you can make even like a token out of Bitcoin and, 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 and those those things. Um, mm -hmm. I right now don't see, see it that way. That's why I'm only in Bitcoin. That's why I keep my channel quite Bitcoin only. Um, right. But I'm always like, I'm always a, a free market cap, uh, a free market maximalist. Like right. I, I I call you could call me a Bitcoin maximalist, but I'm, I'm actually a free market maximalist. Uh, and, and so like, if there's actually something that, um, complements Bitcoin or is good for Bitcoin, I would be very open to it. I don't see it right now with it, but how do you see layer two potentially making altcoins obsolete because the, the all those things you can maybe also do on a, a layer two, or do you see, uh, a, a, put long-term uh, a market for, for altcoins, like looking out 10, 20 years from now, like I think the next five years, they're for sure here, but what is what about like really long-term? Term, that's a great question, by the way. Uh, really long-term, I see altcoins will die out eventually, you know, 99% of them. Um, there'll be a handful that were actually competitive and doing something of value. See, with the advantages that ETH had over Bitcoin with the programmability and things like that and transaction speeds, I think as, as, as uh, technology progresses and they, they add things to the layer two for Bitcoin, they'll add these features much in the way that, you know, Apple doesn't add the features Android has until six years later, and then they show up and they kind of act like they invented slow motion video, right? <laughs> Get it here, folks. We, we invented slow motion video and widgets. It took them like 10 years to put widgets on there, but it's something that, but when they do do these things, when Google went, for example, uh, do you remember Clubhouse? Yes, the it app. was the, the spaces uh, uh, that was spaces is now on Twitter. It was Clubhouse, right. yeah. It's where's Clubhouse now? <laughs> you did, that's my point. Like, it, where's Vine now? Uh, what has what has TikTok made everyone else in the space do? Have shorts and videos on all apps. Even Twitter now has like a video feed of shorts like TikTok does, right? And kind of when when a lot of these companies being built, because they are tech companies, they're not like Bitcoin, there's only one Bitcoin. These are tech companies. 90% of companies fail in the first five years. What makes you think these crypto scam companies are any different? They're going to be a, at a higher clip, like 99%, right? Uh, point is, you might have a coin out that's doing its clubhouse thing right now. If it's smart and if it's really good and if that thing was really adding something to the space, that can be built on layer two, on Bitcoin, on the standard. Why, you know, and eventually it will be like that. You know, I remember when the phones, back to the cell phone analogy, phones were, uh, people were trying things, all different types, shapes, I had the sidekick, it would flip out, 
It was cool. It had the keypad on it. People were experimenting with things. Now, you know, nine out of 10 phones look like a brick, look like the, the, the regular iPhone candy bar copy, right? Um, if it's good, it'll be adopted in and these things like uh, the, the clubhouse or to, to say like an altcoin variance. I do think ETH will stick around though. I think ETH will benefit from this, what I just said, all the advancements of Solana, eventually ETH will adopt and accelerate. I think it, it it's a, they'll share the space like Pepsi and Cola does. Cola's the king and Pepsi does have a large market share and, and everybody else fights for the rest of the scraps like that. Now with Bitcoin, Bitcoin, there there is no competition for Bitcoin. What it's here to do, it's here to be the money, fix the money. Uh, there's no competition for that. It's one of one. They th They want to sell us. This is a bigger, better, faster Bitcoin. I think... I think people have been catching on to that now because in 2017, that was, we fell for it. You know what I mean? Like uh, XRP, I'm not, I'm not issuing on XRP, full disclosure. You know, I have invested previously in XRP, but am I adding to, to my XRP stash? No, no, because... Um, it's just not doing what I see Bitcoin is here to do. And the, the, the significance of what Bitcoin is here to do is it's to change the world. It's and, and it's changed the financial system. We need something that doesn't have a throat to choke, a neck to choke, like Brad Garlinghouse and the Ripple team, which I think are very, I think they have an excellent staff, which which has just been proven. Their team defeated the SEC very handedly. Um they couldn't compete with the, the squad at Ripple, but that's just their team being a great tech company, being ahead of the game for, for the regulations and all that. They'll never uh, make XRP or Ripple what Bitcoin is because Satoshi made away, he gave it away, then he went away, right? <laughs> These guys aren't going away because they want to make money. Everybody that starts a new coin, they're here to make money. Bitcoin's here for the people, for the world. So uh, if we're smart, we'll be building on Bitcoin. All these new ideas, maybe they'll be tested out on the altcoin scene. Because a lot of creativity and innovation happens there. You can't deny that. Eventually, eventually, if it's worth it, it'll be adopted by the big boy. Bitcoin. <laughs> you know, that's how I, I see it. Uh, it's really interesting for me also the altcoin topic. Um, how do you see the Eve switch from proof of work to proof of stake? I, I, I've seen and I just looked at it right now also again to, to confirm it. Um, since they switched, they actually went down 50% when you measured in Bitcoin, uh, which was an interesting thing. Um, uh, was that a, was that a good move? I mean, now they are not compared to the Bitcoin even, anymore because like it, there's like not even a, a little bit of similarities to Bitcoin, except mm -hmm. they use cryptography, but <laughs> a lot of the right. technologies use that. Um, how do you see, see that, uh, since they switched <laughs> from proof of stake that they actually went down? I think it was, in the middle of 2022 or something like that, they switched. And since then, they went around 50% down uh, against Bitcoin. I think if uh, ETH looked at themselves objectively and honestly, they might say, we made a boo-boo. We made a boo-boo. And but if they were being consistency biased and saying we made the right choice, things just have to pan out. Well, we're seeing how it pans out. Be honest. Proof of work is a is a connection to physicality, reality, and proof of stake is the virtual world where you can do anything, as if we're in one of those AI videos where the peacock becomes the rocket and the rocket becomes, you know, like it's like hallucinating, and you can roll back whatever you want, and there's like uh, aggregation and collection of power to certain stakeholders. You have the most stake in it, then you have the most power. That's against the whole point. So <clears throat> you can't even use the features of uh, staking and stuff like that on a, in a Ethereum ETF. So 
many people will have their Ethereum ETFs and not be able to benefit from the, the staking and, and gain some annual percentage from the staking rewards. Like it's locked up and unavailable for you to get the benefit uh, from staking. So uh, I'm not a big ETH hater. I just hate when people compare anything to Bitcoin. So, you know, more power to those guys. Uh, maybe proof of stake works for what they're trying to do. But please don't come over here saying you're the super ultra, ultra hard money. No, Bitcoin's the ultra hard money. And uh, uh, maybe you're the, the world computer as you guys started out to be. I, I don't know. I don't know where Ethereum goes, but I kind of use Ethereum as a proxy for the whole altcoin market. Right. Um, I, I tell people that if they're just getting into crypto, first understand Bitcoin. If you don't understand that, don't move forward. Don't pass go. Don't collect two hundred dollars till you understand Bitcoin, understand what it's here to do. And then you can kind of, if you want to uh, delve into the poop coinery, ETH is one of the blue chip poop coins, right? <laughs> so uh, I think it represents the innovation and the ideas and people are trying to do new things via uh, Avalanche, via Cardano, via all these layer two, Solana. Um, if it's working that great, I think... Ethereum will adopt it eventually. Be their consensus algorithm needs to be restructured thing on that order. Uh, H bar whisper protocol. I don't know, but none of these things have anything to do with what's going on in the true real world, where it's proof of work and Bitcoin. I think it was a mistake, uh, but maybe it was beneficial to what they're objectives are I, th I think so because that, then the, it, it's uh for, for me it's proof of stake is just like a stock uh like what does proof of stake mean you have to prove that you have a stake in right in eve so like in in mm -hmm. stocks when you have a majority uh, mm -hmm. in stocks you can also dictate better what, what, uh, what, what you can do so like it's it's very right. similar to to what we have with with stocks like it's a proof of you're a majority then, shareholder right so you have uh, some stay in the say in the boardroom and all that no we don't have that in the in the bitcoin world so i totally agree and 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 the uh, staking rewards are kind of like dividends like mm -hmm. for me like uh, because you uh basically because eve mm -hmm. has to make somehow a, a cash flow and 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 to to make the the staking and everything go good but yeah it's an interesting topic for me i i i cover it less and less altcoins i feel like uh, less and less are really interested in, in in that topic but every once in a while i think it's interesting to to make sure to cover the difference between mm -hmm. Bitcoin and all the altcoins mm -hmm. and, and see what's going on. And uh, I was completely in altcoin some, at some point where I was like, Hey, like there's this and mm -hmm. there's that, but this was just a short phase. And then I went all in in Bitcoin and came right. a very toxic Bitcoin maxi. Then right. I went a little bit back again and was like, okay, like they might have a marketplace. Like, I don't care. I'm a free market mac a maximalist. Mm -hmm. If if there's actually a place for Ethereum and Solana and all the other, other altcoins, then there will be a place. Like the free market right. will let them die or let them or stay. Live. Like uh, pe people will not give them money uh, long term if this does not make sense. So uh, short term, everything can happen. And long term, the the free market referee will <laughs> will will uh, sort out what has value and what not. And uh, I'm feeling very safe and very good with Bitcoin. Uh, I would not feel safe if I have a lot of money in Ethereum or Solana. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, every, everyone's money is everyone's choice. Like they can do whatever they want and please to do. I had a right. German uh, TikTok channel at some point, actually. Uh, it got... I think to 3000 subscribers or something like that. And I had a popular saying, uh, at the end of the, uh, uh, thing, because I always wanted to make sure that people don't invest just because I say something. And I was with stocks and, and altcoins and everything like that. In the mm -hmm. end of the video, I always said like, dein Geld, dein Entscheidung, which means your money, your decision okay. uh, in English. So, and, and I like that. Like, uh, we, we should not tell anyone to, what to do with money. I can tell. Right. 
someone what I do with my money, mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's your money. It's your decision. It's your life. And money is your life's energy. Like who am I right. to, to decide what you do with your right. life's energy? And I think free market uh, maximalism is, is the, is the thing that I, I love to do, but it ha it just happens to be that because I'm a free market maximalist, I'm right now also a Bitcoin maximalist, <laughs> but maybe I'm going back to stocks. Maybe I'm investing in real estate. I don't know. Probably not, but mm. maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Um, one one uh, topic uh, I want to cover also with you. Um, you said you grew up in the 1980s. Where, where, when were you born? It I was, was in the 90s. Yeah, yeah, I was I was I was a uh, 80s baby. Actually born in the late 70s. So uh, oh. I grew up in the 80s. I remember Michael Jackson and Madonna and all that stuff like that. <laughs> Robocop. I, I bring <laughs> I, I bring them up because mm -hmm. my dad actually was born in 1971, exactly okay. 1971 with, with Nixon and money. gold and stuff like that. Right. Yeah, exactly. And I always say like, um, I think my dad will outlive a fear dominant world. Like I think the fear dominant world uh will will die off before my my dad will die off i mean there are like a lot of factors in that i hope it goes good but with, I, i'm not saying <laughs> that fiat will die off I, i'm just saying the fiat dominant, dominant world, world. world uh, like that fiat might be still around at some point like maybe there's right. like government money that you have to use for taxes or something like that but something else will be more dominant and i think bitcoin is that something else before he dies Uh, and I, I really hope that, and that's what I'm also like, I'm talking with my dad sometimes about that topic a lot. Uh, I want to, uh, to ask you also the question you basically were witnessing in your life till now, how fiat progresses and progresses and progresses and money printing is more and more and more. Uh, I mean, I think Switzerland was the last, uh, country which went off, uh, a completely gold standard, I think in 90. 80s or so. I, I don't know the date exactly, but it was the mm -hmm. last country. Mm -hmm. um, how did you um, in your life see the fiat world go going up? What did you see what maybe was different when you were a teenager or a child uh, to what, what you see now? I mean, of, obviously technology advanced a lot, but mm -hmm. do you see some difference in Uh, in, in the people, you also said something interesting when we talked about smartphones, you said like the iPhone right. made us dumber. Um, right. is, is that all playing with that, that fiat world? Well, you got to realize part of the being in a fiat world and growing up at that time is they don't want you to understand the principles of money. They don't want you to understand that taxation is theft. They don't want you to know that inflation is a silent tax. You know, uh, so they try to do it slowly as much as they can and bore you the frog. But now you cannot taper a Ponzi scheme, which is what I've learned after the, the course of time passing. And uh, first of all, back in those days, you know, I, I was young. So th the most stark thing is what any any old guy say back in my day, this used to only cost a nickel. Right. And, but um, what we're seeing now is that it, it's it's happening faster. And we're, we're like, wait a minute, we're not supposed to be like Argentina. Wait a minute. We're not supposed to be like Zimbabwe. It's not that extreme. But you get my point. Uh, about five years ago, uh, I started traveling more and I would come back to America and I would have price shock. Like, I don't know this place, but it was kind of like, you know, I just come from Colombia or I come from Brazil or I come from Thailand. And I come back and I'm like a $20 cheeseburger. What is this? Like, and they're like, yeah, why are you being so cheap? <laughs> I'm like, what? So, and then now fast forward five years later, and then my cousins and all my friends are kind of saying, they're like, Khalif was right. Like, this is crazy. Eggs are this. And You know, I can't afford to go to a grocery store and, and you can have less in your cart for the same amount of, of money. So I think people are kind of like, hmm, what is that? What, what exactly is that? Because, you know, why are these prices going up? But my wages have not kept up with the prices going up or inflation. So I think the very practical things 
than the theoretical and the, the high ideas, the very practical things that you get less for the same amount of money or even more money now, nowadays. And it's happening faster and faster. And that's one of the things that's going to imprint upon people Bitcoin's worth. You know, it's, it's, it's sad to say because to me, the price of Bitcoin is the least interesting thing, but it's the sexiest thing. So it's kind of like the hot girl in the room. She gets all the attention, right? But when you talk to her, not much going on there, but the price, right? But there's so much going on in Bitcoin, social, economically, the way we interact with each other, the idea of what is money? What is real hard money? What is something, the idea of like, Bitcoin being pure money, engineered to be money. What if we had that idea for government, pure government, pure schools, pure churches, where you don't have to old ladies money, which she gives to the church instead of giving to the uh, medicine man to save her life. You know, how about pure uh, system? You see my point and the, these these things start to proliferate in, into the world. I think it's beneficial overall when we start to, to see why Bitcoin is here. That, and it's just like I applaud you um, interviewing a Bitcoiner every day because we all come at it from slightly different angles, right? I'm from Newark, New Jersey is where I'm from. And a lot of people in that underprivileged neighborhood can use something like that like Bitcoin, can use something like Bitcoin to, to, to lift them up and um, have generational wealth where they can, okay, it took grandpa to save this much uh, Bitcoin and his son, and he gave it to his son, like one would give a house to their son, inherit it, and they add to the pile and that pile is becoming increasingly more valuable and not unlike a house, you can take it wherever you want if, you're, if your nation starts treating you badly and you have to escape that nation or what have you. You can take your Bitcoin with you with no problem at all, as opposed to having a house you're stuck with. You have to sell it. It's a bunch of red tape, legal restrictions, and, all, and the government can just straight up confiscate it from you as well. So uh, there's so many benefits and beneficial uh, attributes to Bitcoin, I think, Simply doing what you do, doing what I try to do, educate people why Bitcoin and things will become more and more clear slowly. I applaud what's going on in uh, El Salvador. Uh, they're, they're teaching the kids from a very young age, six years old, seven years old, eight years old, what Bitcoin is. They have lessons geared towards their age level all the way up to adulthood. I think that's brilliant. I think that's um, the thing that was missing when I was a kid. They didn't have that in school, teaching us about money. What is money? Why things should be, why money should be scarce like gold, all the good properties of gold that was built upon and made better by Bitcoin. We didn't learn that stuff. I didn't know anything about that, you know? So I think the education and things that you do and what I try to do, I think together will we'll win, man. I think we'll win. The, the, I, nothing stops an, I, an idea whose time has come. Do you see any major obstacles to that? Like you, as you say, you're, you're winning, but do you see any challenges leading up to that Bitcoin standard? Sure. The people that are in power uh, don't want to relinquish that power. Why would they? If you are in control, why would you give up and relinquish that control? That's the number one thing. Uh, old guys that are in the space, older guys that are in the space that are from the traditional finance system uh, that are in Bitcoin now, even they would say like, you know, their peers, they just don't get it. They don't want to learn a new thing or they're, you know, they're billionaires. Why would they want to change what's working clearly for them? They're in the top one, 0.00001%. Why rock the boat? Why change it? Why didn't Warren Buffett, who I love, I love the guy, but he calls Bitcoin rat poison square. And I would love if he understood it, but what's his incentives? 
I'll use a phrase from Buffett himself. He says, show me the incentives and I'll show you the outcomes. He doesn't have a real incentive to know Bitcoin because uh, let's be honest, he doesn't have that much time left here on this earth. <clears throat> but his grandson might be very interested. So mm -hmm. I have one, two more questions for you uh, that I'd ask every one of my guests. The first question is, what can we learn from you besides all the things that we already talked about on the podcast? <clears throat> you can learn from me, my personal journey. It's not unlike uh, many people that I talk to. Uh, I try to talk to people like in a very practical, plain sense on why Bitcoin. There's all these high ideas about why it's great. But at the end of the day, it's about saving your life's energy and time and not being de de devalued by somebody you didn't vote for or ask for them to do this. It's just being done to you. So um, for me, the real man's touch to Bitcoin. <laughs> um, I love it. Uh, you can learn how to freestyle too if you want a freestyle session. <laughs> <laughs> really good. Perfect. Then uh, we have one more thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Our end routine where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest without knowing who the next guest actually is. Uh -huh. Your question from the previous guest uh, is, what is your plan If uh, shit hits the fan, where would you go within three days? So the question is like, if your country does something where you feel threatened in your freedom, mm -hmm. um, wherever you are right now, where would you go? Do you have a plan where you can execute that? Or like in three days, uh, where would I go? And then how is your plan looking for that? Or do you, uh, do you think it's important to have a plan like that? You should have a plan like that. You should have a Uh, second and third passport in case your country tries to stop you from leaving some, you know, leaving wherever you are and all that, because you could, they could just cut you dead in the water. You should be able to, um, really cut your ties to everything because some people have families and they're entrenched and they have houses and they have lives. Right. But you need to think about that. I think we're coming to the days and the age where you need to think about that. Um, What happens if we need to get out of there? And if I, if I needed to leave America very fast and I only had three days, I would go to Thailand. I would go to Thailand. Country. They're very accepting. It's uh, a tons of biodiversity here. Um, they're not so much on. They do have some things with the, the royalty and the king and all that. You can't speak upon, upon the king harshly. But uh, besides that, I, I feel more free. When I'm in Thailand, uh, the red tape is less to do things like start a business and, you know, even owning a car and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I'd go to Thailand. <laughs> Amazing. Really cool. With Thank you Bitcoin. so much, uh, Khalif. Uh, Thank you so much, Khalif, for being on for uh, today with our, uh, our guests. Um, mm -hmm. Where can people find you? Where can people reach out to you if they have questions? I'm still on Twitter uh, or X. Right. Crypto Khalif, Crypto C-A-L-I-P-H. I'm on Noster now. Uh, check me out. You can find that through my X account as well. I'm on IG. Same handles, Crypto Khalif everywhere. Amazing. Thank you so much for being on. Also, thank you so much for everyone watching and listening. As always, I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye bye.